Hey, hi, how are you? My name is Svelte and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Today we're going to be talking about Dragoon. Now you might be like, Svelte, you've already made videos on Dragoon. Well, I've made videos on most jobs in the game. But what I haven't done is made advanced guides for the jobs. Now what do I mean by advanced guides? I mean stuff that really only matters when you're trying to be a world racer, i.e. trying to clear all the raids in the first week, or someone who's trying to go for a, like, you know, top 50, top 100 placement on a fight so to speak. Um, this video is really being made as well because I've been relearning Dragoon to prep for the next raid tier in case I wanted to play Dragoon during it, and I've been having a lot of fun, and I've been relearning a lot of the uh, higher-end tech, and I've been excited, really, that I just wanted to like share that higher-end tech with you, my viewer. So, let's get right into it. Okay, let's start by talking about the increased jump speed. Now, what do I mean by increased jump speed? Well, there was, in fact, a patch... I don't remember how long ago it was at this point, so apologies, but it was fairly recent, i.e. it was after 6.1, that increased Dragoon's jump speed. It used to be that Spine Shatter, High Jump, and Dragonfire Dives all took up a full weave window, meaning that you could not use anything else in between your GCDs. I did warn you this was going to be advanced Dragooning, if you're not understanding these terminologies, it's a bunch of stuff you'd look up and learn on your own, this is for, this is literally a quote-unquote advanced course. So, because you can now double weave with high jump and stuff, you can do some crazy stuff. Like, for example, let's see if I can do it without clipping. You can double weave high jump with its own mirage dive without clipping. I clipped a little bit that time, but you get the idea. You can do stuff like that. And you can also weave something like Dragonfire Dive with Garrus Gogol without clipping. As you just saw. No clipping at all. That used to not be possible at all. So it's very, very cool. So, in my opinion, uh, things to double weave and like look to try and double weave. Spine Shatter can be double weaved with just about everything right now. It is very quick. Um, and I do believe that you could probably double weave Spine Shatter High Jump, though I don't recommend it unless you're on like microscopic sub-20 ping. Um, but for the most part, you can, you can weave these things with just about anything. Uh, stuff that I recommend weaving your jumps with is stuff like... Garrus Gogol, uh, Mirage Dive, Life Surge, Wormwind Thrust, you don't know what Mirage Dive is by the way, it is the thing that you get after you have used High Jump, uh, and then Nestrand, because it's basically Garrus Gogol Plus. Any of those buttons are things that can be double weaved with your jumps without much issue at all. Um, you could, like I said, you could probably barely fit in a double weave of High Jump Spine Shatter, but the timing would be very, very tight and I do not recommend it. I'd rather, personally, as well as recommend, people just use Garrus Gogol, Mirage Dive, Nistrand, Life Surge, and Wormwind Thrust as things to be weaving with their jumps. Right, so let's talk a little bit about why I mentioned all those things, but not your party buffs. Something that I find to be important. Your, your personal and party buffs are Lance Charge, Dragon Sight, and Battle Litany. Now, why did I not mention those when I talked about double weaving with your jumps? Well, it's because you want to fit all of your jumps within those, and the most effective way to do that is to essentially hit a GCD, double weave Lance Charge Dragon Sight, hit another GCD, then put Battle Litany out, and then in those next 13-ish seconds, you're going to be hitting all of your buttons. I'm going to go through all of the things you should be fitting inside of all of your party buffs here, and it's going to be a lot, so feel free to pause, rewind, listen, whatever you want to do. So, things you're going to be fitting inside of these three party buffs as best as humanly possible. Just uh, Garrus Gogol, High Jump, two Spine Shatter Dives, Dragonfire Dive, at least one, if not two, Wormwind Thrusts, two Nestrons, and a Mirage Dive. As well as a Life Surge, if you have a Heaven's Thrust coming up. That is a lot. That is f Oh, sorry, I didn't even- I didn't even mention the most important one, the one that causes the most problems, Star Diver. Star Diver causes problems because, unlike any of the other jumps, it is still a solo weave window jump. It is way too animation heavy for you to be able to weave anything else with it, unfortunately. So make sure you save a single weave window for Star Diver. Now keep in mind, that is, what, five jumps? I jump, Spine Shatter, Spine Shatter again, Dragon Fire, and then Star Diver. That is five jumps, as well as... Garrus Gogol, Nestrand, Nestrand, so there's three more weaves. Mirage Dive, that's a fourth uh, extra weave, and Wormwind Thrust, because you'll probably get one. That's a fifth weave. 
So you have five jumps and five weaves to fit inside of Battle Litany and fit the 15 second window that you get from Battle Litany. It's pretty tight. You need to be really aggressive and active if you want to do that. But let's talk a little bit about why I'm mentioning Spine Shatter so much. It's because fitting both Spine Shatters into your two minute burst is a really good optimization to be shooting for if you're trying to improve your personal performance. However, you can, if you're having trouble fitting everything into your burst window, you can, for practice sake, use your Spine Shatter on only Lance Charge windows. Um, you get two Lance Charge windows every two minutes, like one Lance Charge window a minute, as opposed to one Dragon Sight every two minutes and one Battle Litany every two minutes. So what you could be doing, although it is less optimal and overall less damage, is using Spine Shatter Dive at the odd minute windows with Lance Charge, and then using its other charge at the even minute windows with every buff up. I recommend trying to make yourself get out of your comfort zone, trying to fit both Spine Shatter Dives inside the even minute burst windows, trying to fit both of them in there. But it is a lot, and if you're having trouble fitting it all, I would focus more on fitting everything else first before trying to fit in that sp second Spine Shatter Dive. All right, if we're going to talk about optimizing burst windows and optimizing life windows, before I get too more into depth with life windows, I want to talk about drifting. Now, what do I mean by drifting? I mean, so when you hit Garrus Gogol, it goes on cooldown for 30 seconds. You will only be able to use it again at the end of this 30 seconds, right? Drifting is when you're not immediately hitting that button the second it comes off of cooldown, so it will drift a little further away from its initial intended cast time. Now, Garrus Gogol and High Jump are the two buttons that drifting matters the most for. And why does it matter the most? Because they control your burst windows. If you don't hit Garrus Gogol off cooldown, you will be slowly delaying entering Life of the Dragon. If you don't hit High Jump off cooldown, you will not be getting your High Jump and Mirage Dive inside of party buffs. And once again, delaying your Life of the Dragon. So, how do you go about trying to make sure they don't drift? Well, number one thing, make sure you hit Garrus Gogol off cooldown. Make sure you hit High Jump off cooldown. If you do your opener properly, um, which I have other videos on, go watch those. And I think I even have a video of just doing the opener. Um, which I might actually remake with the double weaving of Mirage Dive here in a bit. We'll see. Um, but if you do your opener properly, you use Garrus Gogol after you cast... We, you use you do Wheeling Thrust in your opener, then you do Garrus Gogol and Weave Life Surge, hit Fanging Claw, and then hit High Jump. So that's how it's going to work for the rest of the fight. You will hit a GCD, hit Garrus Gogol immediately afterwards, you will hit the next GCD, and hit High Jump immediately afterwards. You want to try and drift those two things, like make them delayed, as little as possible. You want to be hitting them immediately after you hit your GCD to cause as little drift as possible. Now something else that is important is when you exit Life of the Dragon windows, Garrus Gogol will not be showing its cooldown. However, it will immediately be coming off cooldown the second your Life of the Dragon window ends. So what do you need to do? As your Life of the Dragon window is counting down from like sub 3 down, you want to be pre-pressing the button for Garrus Gogol so that when you cast, when you, when you immediately can cast Garrus Gogol, you are immediately casting Garrus Gogol. That is the number one cause of me drifting my Garrus Gogol out of where it needs to be sitting. The bottom line is you need to be ready to hit the button immediately after you exit that life window. And the same for high jump, you need to be hitting high jump the GCD after you're casting Garrus Gogol right after ending your life window. Mirage dive, it can kind of scoot around a little bit. You got like 10 seconds to hit it. Don't worry too much about Mirage Dive. Garrus Gogol and High Jump, though, those need to be immediately hit off cooldown every time where you're going to be delaying your burst window and not being able to fit all of your buttons into yours and the party's buffs. Okay, now that I've talked a little bit about what all fits in your burst windows and how to not let Garrus Gogol and High Jump be drifting, let's talk a little bit, a little, just a wee bit, just a tiny bit about optimizing your life windows. Now, your life window, as I'm sure you know if you're watching a Dragoon Advanced Techniques video, you get two Mirage Dives, and then the next time you hit Garrus Gogol, you'll enter into your life window, turning Garrus Gogol into the harder hitting, faster cooling down Nestrand, and just gaining access to Star Diver, which is just a very powerful skill. So, how do you optimize that window? First of all, let's talk about what you need to use in your life window underneath your buffs. So, let's talk about the even-minute windows first, because that is fitting more underneath a smaller timer. 
Because in the 15 seconds of Battle Litany, you want to be hitting your Garrus Gogol, as well as two Nestrons and a Star Diver. Notice I'm leaving out everything else that I'm talking about. It's because I'm specifically talking about the extra skills you're getting during the life window. These are the extra things that you are also fitting in that are not in, like, your opener, for example. Which will often lead to just, you know, you gotta hit more buttons now. <laughs> so the important thing is, in this 15 seconds window for Battle Litany, you'll be hitting Garrus Gogol to enter your life window, you'll be hitting the Nestrand, you'll be hitting your high jump, you'll be hitting uh, Star Diver at some point, and then you'll hit another Nestrand. So you need to make sure you are getting Garrus Gokul, Nestrand, Nestrand, Star Diver, and High Jump all within that Battle Litany window. I'm not even including the two Spine Shatters, the Dragonfire, and the Mirage Dive you're supposed to be fitting in there too. Now, you have a little bit of leeway. When you enter your life window, you can immediately hit Nestrand right after you enter it, but you can hit Garrus Gokul and then keep hitting the button, and you'll immediately cast Nestrand afterwards. Now, you don't always want to do that. Sometimes you want to hit Garrus Gogol to enter the window, and then wait on that Nestrand. However, you cannot wait too much. If you wait too much, it will not let you hit two of them under Battle Litany. Battle Litany is only 15 seconds, and Nestrand has a 10 second recast timer. Meaning that if you wait three GCDs, you have now pushed your second Nestrand outside of Battle Litany. It'll still end under Lance Charge and Dragon Sight, which is good. However, you want to fit it under Battle Litany, if at all possible. Like I said, this is advanced stuff, this is hyper-optimization, this is you want to fit as much as possible in as short of a window as possible. Keep in mind, this also makes it so that you're perfectly aligned with a bard, for example. If your party runs a bard, you, they'll be hitting their buttons the same time you hit Battle Litany. You can fit all of your buttons under your Battle Litany, you can fit all of your buttons under bard buffs, for example. Like I said, it is, it is very important that you hit... Nestrand as early as possible, however, it is more important that you prevent Garrus Gogol and High Jump from drifting too much. We talked about that in the previous little bit of this video. So if you're having trouble, like I said, focus on getting Garrus Gogol and High Jump to not drift as first and foremost things, then change your focus to, okay, well, I want to double weave Garrus Gogol and Nestrand into the same window, and then hit High Jump in the next window, so then I can follow up with a Star Diver in the next window. That's how I kind of try and do it, and it works pretty well for me. Okay, so this one's like a bit more like nebulous in terms of being a a thing, a um, a tip, a guide, an improvement source. But learning when to potion is very important. Um, Dragoon is a job that uses potions best at even minute windows when you can enter your life of the dragon. However, there are fights like currently the first phase of Pandemonium Four Savage, where if you wait till the two minute, minute minute window to potion, you won't actually get full value. Because you'll only get to potion once. And spoiler alert, potioning twice in a fight is more value than potioning once. So, keep in mind that Dragoon is very dependent on kill times of fights as to when to potion, first of all. If the fight is less than eight minutes, you're going to want to potion in your opener. And then at the six minute window. If the fight is more than 8 minutes, you'll want to potion at the 2 minute window, and then at the 8 minute window at the end. Now keep in mind there are some fights like uh, Pandemonium 2 Savage and Pandemonium 3 Savage where you can fit in 2 pot windows with delays because of how the fight is structured. For example, in Pandemonium 2, because technically how the fight gets delayed because of Campio's Harma, you will be able to fit in a second pot window at the 6 minute mark because it was delayed by 30 seconds. The same can be applied to um, Endemonium 3 Savage. Because of adds being kind of forced downtime and adding an extra 30 seconds under optimal or suboptimal conditions, depending on how you want to view that, um, the pot, your pot will come back off of cooldown in time for your final two minute window burst, which will be, as I'm sure you can guess, very useful. The bottom line is that if the fight is greater than is like eight minutes, you're going to pot at your two minute window and then eight minute window. If the pot is less, you're gonna pot in your opener and then you're going to pot at the six minute. Now, here's the kicker, here's the kicker. When in your combos are you potting? Well, technically speaking, um, you're potting one GCD before you pop your buffs. 
Now, if you have not had full uptime, that'll change the GCD you're potting on. If you've had skills drifting, that'll change the GCD you're potting on. However, to fit the most amount of skills inside of your pot window and the most amount of damage inside your pot window, I recommend potting when there are five seconds left on Dragon Sight and Lance Charge. Meaning that you hit a GCD, you see there's five seconds left, you will hit your tincture. You'll hit the next GCD and then you'll immediately hit your buffs, giving you as much time as you can possibly fit. As, well, as much time as you possibly can underneath your buffs to hit everything underneath your tincture as well. The reason I also say you should do that because that will allow you to hit all three Nestrons underneath your tincture. So underneath your tincture, here's what you should be hitting um, at bare minimum. And I'll also say at a maximum. So at bare minimum, you should be hitting your entire burst window. So Dragonfire, two Spine Shatters, High Jump, Mirage Dive, Garrus Gogol, three Nostrons, Star Diver, two Worm Wind Thrusts, and a Life Surge boosted Heaven's Thrust. I believe, technically speaking, if the timing works out, you can actually fit three Worm Wind Thrusts. No, no, never mind. I'm sorry. I am incorrect. We're not even cutting this out of the video because I don't, I'm not afraid of admitting when I'm wrong. The bottom line is you should fit two Worm Wind Thrusts all of your OGCD buttons, and then you should probably have a Life Surge boosted Heaven's Thrust in there somewhere. Because it is a 30 second window, it is very long, so you will almost without a doubt fit all of those buttons inside the window. However, you should also be fitting them underneath your party buffs as well. Let's talk about Dragoon's movement skills. Now, you do have movement in the form of your jumps. However, 9 times out of 10, to... Uh, make good uses of your jumps, you're already standing in melee range anyways. There are times when you can use jumps to re-engage because of what a mechanic forced you to do. However, in a lot of this, at least current Savage fights, you're typically having full uptime during your burst windows, or at least really good uptime during your burst windows, and you will more often than not just be standing in melee range during your jumps. However, we have another skill. An elusive jump. Now what is Elusive Jump? Elusive Jump is a back step that moves you 15 yalms. So for example, let's stand right here on this corner, right? Actually, you know what? Let's make this easier. Let's, let's make this easier, shall we? Put it flat right here. And then do an Elusive Jump. So, this is 15 yalms. From that edge of the one to this edge of the two is 15 yalms. This is your getaway distance. This is, if there's a mechanic causing problems in this area over here, you can elusive jump out. Or, if you're having a mechanic that's forcing you to run away from the boss to, say, here, you can elusive jump back in. Now, elusive jump is a very useful skill. However, it is dependent on your character's position. That's one of the reasons why I play on legacy controls. Because I can do stuff like that, where even though my camera was facing towards you, the viewer, or, like, sorry, my character's facing towards you, the viewer, I could flip my character around whichever way, and then immediately elusive jump in that direction. It's a very useful skill, I highly recommend you learn how to use it, and it's one of the reasons I actually recommend legacy controls to players who play Dragoon. Being able to change your character direction and have them backflip in that direction is a very, very useful skill. Okay, and now for what will probably be the last part of this video, let's talk about party buffs. The Dragoon has two party buffs, however, they function a little different than a lot of other jobs' as party buffs. First and foremost, the classic, the one that Dragoon is very much known for, because they have it for a very long time, is Battle Litany. Battle Litany is just a straight-up crit rate buff. It is 10% to your crit rate, and that is a big deal for a lot of jobs which want to crit their big skills. However, it is not a very massive range. Remember how I said elusive jump is 15 yalms, or 15 meters, or whatever their measurements are here? Uh, that's all the battle litany can go. So if someone is out of backflip range from you, they're not going to be hit by battle litany. So, something that I have taken to doing to practice doing Dragoon better is say the boss is marker 2 there. Um, and there's mechanics going around, out all around marker 2, and people are running all over the place. I personally try and walk directly under the buff, the boss, to hit Battle Litany, so I can hit people in all areas around me. That's something that I've taken to doing, to try and make Battle Litany hit as many people as possible. That's something I recommend you do. Hit as many people as possible with Battle Litany as well. Let's talk about Dragon Sight now. 
Battle Enemy is the AoE party buff. Dragon Sight is a one-person buff that boosts their damage by 5%. It is actually a quite strong buff, as that is the power of most party buffs in this game. Most don't go beyond 5%. However, it's only to one person, and you either need to click on the person and then use Dragon Sight, or use a macro, like I have made. So let's look at my Dragon Sight macro here. I turn off the arrow code, and it spams Action Dragon Sight on targets. I have my party list set up so that slot number 6 is the highest DPS melee. Slot number 7 is typically the next highest DPS melee or the caster. And slot number 8 is the fizz ranged. Um, however, that is not always a go-to rule. But that is a good like general rule of thumb is to set up your party list in a certain way. So for example, let's go to character config. Let's go to UI settings and party list. I can show you my role sort settings, which are actually currently incorrect, and now they are fixed. So, like Ninja, for example, is like your number one priority target because they deal the most amount of damage, followed by like Bunk and Samurai, then Reaper and Traguna here. Um, this is not a perfect list, and in fact, um, according to some of the people who run numbers over at the balance, Bard and Dancer can often be better Dragon Sight partners then Black Mage, Red Mage, and Summoner if they are in their burst windows because they actually do more damage during those windows even if they on average do a little bit less. However, there is a website that I will try and link in the description which is a resource that I found in the balance that you can plug FF logs into. So keep in mind you will need to have FF logs to make use of this. Um, but you can plug in the numbers from FF Logs runs and determine who would have been the best Dragon Sight partner. This is more of a case scenario when you have joined a party that is trying to go for speed kills or for very pretty numbers, or for your static, where you're consistently playing with the same people and they consistently perform in similar ways, so you can determine who to best be giving your Dragon Sight to during burst windows. Because sometimes, very rarely but sometimes, uh, a dancer will be outperforming a reaper just because of being lucky or just they have a better time pulling their resources and the reaper is going for a bit more of a safety play, for example. Or say, a bard will be putting out more burst than a black mage because the black mage had to spend like triple cast on and xenoglossies on movement earlier in the fight and the bard just got to pull resources up. There are weird use case scenarios. Go look at priority lists online for how to use Dragon Sight more effectively, use the tether that I'm going to link in the description to try and figure out how to best use it. If you're just doing it on the fly in random pug groups, uh, if you don't have a monkey with an abacus sitting on your shoulder, wink, um, just look at aggro. That's your best bet to go by. If you're, if you, if you're in a, an alliance raid, for example, and your party has two melees, um, then like a summoner, and then like... A dancer, but you notice that the summoner is the highest on aggro, even higher than you. Maybe just maybe just throw the dragon sight tether to them. That's a pretty okay way of being able to tell how much damage someone is doing by how high they are sitting on aggro. It's not a flawless system, don't get me wrong, but it's just like if you're learning and say you're on like a console in place of on PC, so you don't have access to monkeys with abacuses. Um aggro is a pretty decent way of going about it. Yeah, well, that's it. This is probably a really long video. There's a lot of parts to this, but this is a high-end optimization guide for Dragoon. There's some slightly more basic tips, so if you were a newer Dragoon player, hopefully you still learned something out of high-end optimization. I don't proclaim to be a perfect Dragoon player. I just really enjoy the job and practice it a lot and try my best to improve and take all these tips that I give out and take them to heart and use them myself. Uh, if you like this content, please subscribe. Like, 90% of you watching this video aren't subscribed right now. And I know that for a fact because I have the statistics, so just go hit the sub button. It's free. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't bite, I promise. If you really liked the video, leave a like. If you really didn't like the video, leave a dislike. I don't care. It'll help me improve. Leave a comment about how wrong I was or how right I was or how much this helped you or how much this hurt you. Regardless of all that, thanks for hanging out and watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.